Hi, I'm Kendall. Hi, I'm Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and welcome to our discussion time today. Um, we're going to be focusing on wellness today. So wellness for people of colour, wellness for everybody, and how wellness for us has been monumental for our growth, I should yeah. say. So, Kendall, would you like to start? Yes. So again, um, Kendall, um, obviously not from the UK. Uh, I grew up in California, and I, I'm actually from Baltimore, which is the East, East Coast, but then I moved to Los Angeles uh, for an art school, so I've been dancing all my life, right. um, even before um, high school. And I continued on with my dance training at Lions Ballet in San Francisco, where I was introduced to gyrotonic and gyrokinesis. It was a part of our curriculum. Um, I found it to really help me be more aware of my body and movement, especially for performing. And so I basically just stuck with it and I've been teaching. I've been a certified trainer for over 10 years now yeah. and I'm only 31, so you do the math. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dance were you doing? Uh, so primarily ba ballet. Mm -hmm. um, the university that I went to, Lines Ballet, um, was contemporary ballet, so we would have classical, with improvisation, but also the philosophy behind what contemporary ballet is. So it wasn't necessarily a style, but more of a philosophy of sort of how do you do the movement? How are you feeling the movement? And I think this philosophy with gyrokinesis mm -hmm. in the program made so much sense actually, because we were thinking about the body and the mind as one entity. And so this is sort of how I think as humans we should be connecting with ourselves is mm -hmm. how and why asking questions doing research with ourselves but also like looking for help but also like being a little bit in internal to really just um, build your awareness um, so yes I say that I've done ballet and contemporary but really it was mainly of the philosophy right and for me, the technique of it is just sort of the fun bit, you mm. know, like working on technique and becoming stronger and yeah. things like that. And the seeing the change in your body is yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And obviously, so you've been dancing for years and working with the body and working with different types of movement therapies mm. for years. Yeah. What does it feel like to be a woman of colour doing something that you don't see many women of colour, especially here in the UK, doing? What has that done to your wellness and your well-being? Well, it's interesting because I guess um, for some reason I never really thought about it. And I think it's sort of, it was an unintentional blind eye mm. of just sort of like me just doing what I need to do and like forgetting my representation. Mm. Although like my mother and we, like, we, for example, dance history, they had always touch on um, African Americans and things like that, but it wasn't so drawn out uh, education wise. Mm. And I guess I just never questioned it, which is also that's something to think about it. Uh, think about as well. It's just sort of like I, I literally went through most of my life not even mm. thinking about my role mm -hmm. in the space and how important it is. Mm -hmm. and, um, the people that I looked up to more of various backgrounds, but I think, yeah, I never thought about, like, why am I the only <laughs> one, and yeah. what does it mean, and how come this yeah. is happening, and I think it's just sort of, like, I was just very lucky and privileged in that way, and I Absolutely. didn't even, like, think about it, so. Yeah, which is not, not even, like, a bad thing or a good thing, it's just how your personal experience was, and it's positive, and... It's about now finding and bringing the awareness back to ourselves into how can we now share what we know? Yeah. How can we now share what we know with other people who look like us and other people of colour to take the same steps that you know you took and to be interested? How can you now promote that interest to somebody else who can go down a similar journey as you? Yeah. And yeah, but that is like the, the topic and the point of our, of our conversation today. It's about making wellness and making um, movement therapy, body work therapy, any type of therapy for the body that's going to inspire better well-being is about bringing that to people of colour 
and making it accessible to people of colour and making it inviting to people of colour. And yeah, it's yeah. just interesting. And uh, you can talk about you now. <laughs> so, I'm a yoga teacher, um, a Thai massage practitioner and a stretch therapist. Um, I didn't come from like the dance industry, but knew the, the effects and the benefits of movement therapy from very, very young. Um, I fell in love with with yoga probably about, I don't know, maybe almost like a decade ago. And that was literally just me going into a class which I had no idea what it was about and within an hour falling in love with something that would literally change my life. Um, yeah, years of practicing yoga and finding what worked for me and for my body and then going to India to get my qualifications mm -hmm. and realised what I loved about yoga was how I felt with people and their response from having a class and their response having a class with me. So then I later on went back to Asia, Southeast Asia this time to learn Thai yoga massage or Thai massage in Chiang Mai in Thailand for four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just was able to put all my interests and loves into one place. I realised I love working with my hands, I love working with my body. So I thought, you know, if I can do all of that and help people, it was, for me it was a win-win. Growing up and finding my own wellness journey and finding something that worked for me, there was no, there was very, very little representation for people of colour, women of colour to do these things. Even going onto my teacher training course in India, going onto my Thai massage course in Thailand, going to classes in the UK, I was always one or one or two of the black people that were in the room, you know? And if, even though I don't feel like I experienced any, um, like overt racism, I didn't feel necessarily ostracised but I didn't see like a, a person of colour on a poster outside of a yoga studio so there was no invitation for me, it was just something that I stumbled across almost by accident and fell in love with and I feel as though that's where the wellness industry needs a bit of a change, you know the wellness industry is, is growing and it's trendy to be well, to, to have well-being and to have forms of wellness now yeah. but is it really accessible to everybody? Mm. Has it been accessible to everybody up until now? And in my personal opinion, in living in the UK, I, was, I will say no, I will say it hasn't been accessible to everybody. The term wellness was almost associated with a type of luxury. Like if you practice anything that's wellness driven or if you go to a yoga class or you get regular massages or mm -hmm. you know, you meditated and you did these things for you, it was seen as a luxury mm -hmm. and it took years of, of me to break that down to realise that hold on a minute like wellness isn't a luxury it's a necessity and it's something that I feel very very passionate about and something that I want people to to become aware of as well that you know their well-being is first and foremost the most important thing that you should be concerned with and if there's ways in which you can improve your well-being and improve your wellness, whether that be through dance, whether it be through yoga, whether it be through gyrokinesis, or be through having regular self-care um, therapies, then that's what should be done and we shouldn't necessarily feel guilty mm -hmm. for doing it. But growing up, I'm not sure if it's the same for you living in the States, but I didn't necessarily see many people of colour doing what I do today. Like there was no role models for me, there was no no one to aspire to, no one to be like, oh, I wonder how she was able to do it. Like being a dancer, did you have any role models? You know? I think like in the history books, there was like, mm -hmm. um, for example, in the dance world, Dance Theatre of Harlem, obviously Alvin Al Al Ailey, but I still didn't like connect for some reason mm -hmm. with that. Um, I did appreciate like, whoa, look how like insanely technical and, yeah. and and beautiful these people are but I just felt like not that yeah either it was so strange I was just sort of like who is like me in between mm. and I think more and more I'm starting to see people who are just sort of acknowledging that now yeah. whereas I like I said before I didn't even think about it but also not able to relate 
to other black people, which yeah. is really weird to say. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? Um, That's like through no fault of your own, mm. and I thought like that is the point. It's if there's no representation of people who look like us doing the things that we're interested in, there's no like subconscious invitation. Like living in the UK, growing up in London, I didn't see any people of colour in the wellness industry that I would aspire towards. I just had to like pick pieces up from what I saw from American culture and try to adapt it to my UK lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Bringing that awareness out to people and, and showing people that you don't have to look a type of way to go into a yoga studio. You don't have to look a type of way to do a bar class or a gyrokinesis class. There's no formula to it. There's no prerequisite. You don't have to look a type of way or even like have the certain type of level of understanding. You just need to be willing and to be open to experience it ultimately. And almost just like breaking the habit of just saying, it's not for us. Our community can break out of the comfort zone of yes. like what, what you were just saying. Yeah. That's not for me, that's for someone else. And yeah. like there's not enough of people like me, so I probably shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's sort of like, well, nine times out of ten, it's probably better if you just sort of like push yourself and see if you like it. Because yeah. it's just sort of like it's about education as mm -hmm. well and seeing what you're into and just like um, almost becoming a dork about yeah. Um, something that you find just on your own. Just passionate about something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're interested in doing something, if something inspires you to give it a try, it's having the guts to go out and try and see if it works for you yeah. and going from there. Totally. You know, if you go back and you dig up in your history, a lot of the things that we think is their thing has is actually our thing. Our ancestors have been doing it for years and years and years. So like take, having our own take on it and developing something that's already there and making it accessible to people of colour, putting your own spin on it, giving it some spice and some flavour and realising, oh, hold on a minute, this is for me. This yeah, and in terms of um, well-being for me, I think it was the journey of... I mean, it's almost like its own journey in itself being in the well-being community absolutely let alone <laughs> like representing another community mm. um i think the journey of getting to know yourself is really huge yeah and you find that within the work you find that within training so i think like i don't know for me education in school was really important because i i had like several years of growing and I think within that you become more comfortable in your skin mm -hmm. regardless of what your atmosphere is like your environment is like absolutely and then you can then go and speak up and like understand what you're standing up for mm -hmm. I don't know that was my journey um, and then you start meet, meeting like minded people you start finding those people who yeah. are like you that you never saw me when you're growing up um, and then, yeah, hopefully more of us can continue these journeys and continue coming together. And, and also allow, like, family members and siblings to mm. go there as well. Like, making it okay for everyone to go through that journey um, and not having a stigma on... This is it. I mean, we should all be en enriching our minds and bodies. Yeah. Like, hands down. Like, let's not put uh, it's not a put, like, a label on it. Yeah. It, it, doesn't yeah. need to be, it should be any form of wellness that's going to contribute to your your well-being is a plus. Having the ability to, and the ability and the courage to find something that works for you is, is super important, especially times like now, where more than ever, people of colour, we're going to need wellness initiatives, we're going to need wellness activities, practicing the type of therapy, being open to therapy, you know, it's it's all well and good, like, you know, getting getting your hair done and getting your nails done to feel good, but these are very superficial things, you know, yeah. and if you want to go on a deeper level, you need to be able to invest in yourself and be committed to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. It's all well and good, looking good on the exterior, but if underneath you're, you're broken and you're out of balance, that should be your priority to invest your time and your money into that. Mm -hmm. As much as wellness might look all fancy and glittery on the surface or a very luxurious thing to do, it doesn't need to be luxurious. So we spoke about wellness doesn't need to be going five off in, star hotel. Yeah, it doesn't need to be a five star hotel. Yeah, like. <laughs> or hiding in an Indian ashram for six weeks. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be extreme. It can be 
doing your daily class in your living room. Yeah. It can be going to the park, take a long walk. It could be yeah. learning how to meditate, reading on information, reading up on information of the things that inspire you to be better. Yeah. These are all forms of wellness. Yeah, I think I can understand how it, can, it is difficult because that means you have to take a lot of time yeah. with your own thoughts, <laughs> with your own self, yeah. which is, I know is very difficult, especially coming um, if you're coming from a traumatic traumatic background mm. I don't know what's going on in your life but it's that very like puzzle piece that we have to like weave around mm -hmm. for the sake of sanity and I think that we deserve to then pass that down to our family yeah. and our friends and just sort of um, not ignore mm -hmm. whatever it is that you need to figure out or Absolutely. whatever it is that you feel like has been holding you back. Yeah. And also, on the flip side, ignoring it but then working through it, so becoming very successful yeah. and just working completely through it and but still ignoring mm -hmm. your thoughts and feelings and awareness. I understand how it's very, 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 very hard. Mm -hmm. um, but that is part of the journey that needs to be taken for sanity sake absolutely <laughs> like, this is it seriously like. we all need to take responsibility for ourselves and for our well-being and yes there's going to be external factors which will dictate how we feel from day to day and how we deal with trauma how we deal with stress mm -hmm. but it has to be you to take to make that to make that decision to say you know enough's enough like it's time i work on me and I do things that benefit me as a person that you know help me to grow help me to evolve help me to be you know energetically more happy help me to vibrate better it's just to help help yourself as a person you can only give so much you know we're conditioned to work very very hard like twice as hard as our counterparts and to have to always over exceed expectation just to, just to stay where we are and that's tiring man it's so sometimes we're just too stressed to relax too high strung to relax and yeah. we put our well-being on the back burner and it's only until we're at our very end where we're just about to explode is when we're addressing it and by then it's it's, it's hard and it's deep rooted yeah well. it's a little bit too late yeah, yeah. So you can only give what you have to give otherwise you're going to burn yourself into the ground mm -hmm finding a therapy, finding a class, finding something that interests you, that brings you peace. Like, there's nothing like it, like when you find something that makes yeah. you genuinely happy to yeah. do. Something super small, it can be anything, or even talking to someone. Even talking, that's I think, important. I think that is another thing that yeah. I've seen within our community is mm. not talking about things, yeah. not acknowledging things. Right. And then, it just seems like it's okay and then you go behind closed doors and you just secretly deal with it yeah not good not good <laughs> not not good so no. i really encourage people take their grandmothers their aunties their mm. uncles and talk th to them um yeah because they're not here on, on our own yeah right that's so. it and this is that's <laughs> literally the point of this I think it's point this whole video is that <laughs> we are not here we are not on our own there are so many great great and amazing talented people of color doing so many forms of wellness activities or just therapies like sound healing and reiki and massage and ancestral healing and sound baths yoga thai massage gy gyrokinesis gyrotonic pilates like cut yourself some slack like mm -hmm. you know sometimes yeah. do what feels good for you sometimes walk away from that situation that isn't feeling quite right or m remove yourself from an environment or a relationship that isn't healthy yeah. and take a few moments and work no if you might take a f as long as you need to work on yourself it's right? your it's it's what we say in wellness mm -hmm. it's our right to take care of ourselves okay. absolutely so yes you can find me on uh, the movementblog.co.uk i feature um some blog posts that i write about dance wellness fitness I also have some interviews and playlists, just sort of like a fun place 
to um, find more information and also um, when I'm teaching obviously it's going to be online now so I have a list of classes where I'm teaching and also Instagram lives with Stretch Lab. Amazing yeah so you can follow me on Instagram which is Stretch with Jasmine or follow the YouTube which is Mind Body Stretch which I post every week um, new stretch or yoga classes on there and yeah you can always get at me um, through Instagram via my DMs or you can email me um, for any information about any stretch therapy techniques that we do um, Thai, Thai yoga massage that I offer, stretch massage that I offer lots of fun but yeah it's been really good just to have this time to sit down with you Kindle yeah especially like yeah. slowly getting out of quarantine right I felt self isolation really nice <laughs> just to sit and talk absolutely and to you as well yeah so yeah thanks for tuning in uh, I'm gonna try and post more videos like this just sitting with people in the wellness wellness industry um, yeah talk about their journey and kind of just shining a light on what they do so yeah i hope you enjoyed our session today and we'll speak to you again soon excellent thank you